Continuing with exporting video from Flash, we've exported an FLV and a couple of AVIs. Let's try QuickTime. File, Export, Export Movie, and choose QuickTime, and click Save. So here we have some basic parameters. We can ignore the stage color, that is, make the stage into an alpha channel. We can stop exporting when the last frame is reached or after a specified time has elapsed. And we can store temporary data in memory if you have enough, or on disk if your file is so long that you can't store it in memory. But for now, let's just try the export. And it tells us we can get a report at this location basically reports on the performance for exporting each frame. I won't look at that. And here's the file. 144 megabytes. Let's just take a look at that. So there's our file. Now let's go back and look at some advanced options. Change the name of that. And you get to these options by clicking QuickTime Settings. And if you're looking for documentation on these, by the way, look for QuickTime Pro documentation, because this functionality is basically borrowed from QuickTime Pro. So for example, I could click Settings here. I could change the compression type. I could change the frame rate, how often keyframes occur, the color depth, the quality. Let's just try reducing the quality to medium and see if we get a smaller file. We will, but let's see how much smaller it is. And click Export. So there we have it. It's less than half the size. And let's just take a look at that. So I can see a bit of graininess in this. I don't know if you can see that. But um, in any case, those are the types of things that are worthwhile playing around with, again, to get the best balance of quality and size. Let's take a look at some of the other options there. QuickTime Settings. Filters is very interesting. This is a whole set of filters that you can apply. A lot of functionality here. Let's take a look at Color Tint. So we can apply black and white, x-ray, sepia, cobalt. Let's just try black and white. And export. So that's a little bit larger, but not too much larger. and it's in black and white. Just create a new file name here, click Save, go into the QuickTime settings. Now you'll notice that that filter is still there, so it remembers what it did the last time. And if you want to take all the filters off, just click None right here, and then click OK and you'll notice there's no filter there. And in the next tutorial, we'll continue with exporting QuickTime.